name in the Northwest uh, headquarters there in Stanton. Mm -hmm. Lovely place. Anyway, um, I can't believe how brazen uh, Senator uh, Larry is getting. Mm -hmm. I mean, he says right there, undocumented. Why should we be funding the education for essentially foreign nationals? It doesn't make any sense, as, as Janet had said, that, oh, we're so in debt. We've got the highest child poverty rate in the country, which is unbelievable. Um, I have a professional license. I'm a nurse. Um, I haven't worked for in that, that area for many, many years, but I'm not giving up my license. I mean, once you go to school, you put time, money, you, you keep that, that is very precious. And this 1139 is a companion bill to 1159, which was passed and, um, uh, you know, saying that illegal aliens have access to apply for over, over 200 professional licenses. I mean, that alone was outrageous, and now he's following it up with funding. And illegal aliens in programs under this bill will be displacing American That's citizens. Right. Um, also, I, I just want to mention, a bunch of us went to UC Riverside about a month ago, mm -hmm. and we went there because there was a program called Conversation with uh, Senator Ricardo Lara. And because he is the champion of immigrants, not illegals, but they just say immigrants, and the whole focus of that, that uh, event was to uh, encourage everybody to incorporate illegal aliens into the community. Not to help them become citizens, but to incorporate them as they are. When does this stop? So, I'm very against 1139. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Daryl? My name's Daryl Robinson. I'm, uh, I have uh, a military standpoint with this. There are a lot of um, minorities, legal minorities in the military, and they're getting out of the service in record numbers. And this limits their access to any of these programs when they do this. Uh, it makes it harder for them to get into it. And I know several of the um, GIs have gotten out right now, personally, that are having problems just even finding a, a job. Their market is so thin, and there's so many restrictions in California that the businesses are, are flying out of here. There is no reason why that we should be taxed further for, out of all of everybody's personal pocket, to fund for Mexican nationals or uh, any anybody that's not here legally. I mean, this is uh, I, their attitude, uh, the, Senator Laura's attitude about uh, just we can handle it, the money's no object. This is, this is a, a terrible situation for the country. It's gonna, it's gonna play on your children, my great-grandchildren, and it's already a problem because he couldn't, my grandson couldn't find a job for two years just and he's uh, barely got it in anything now. So you have to settle for s so little. And he happens to be a uh, Hispanic too. So it's, an, it's partly. So I have objections to SP 11, bringing back for a lot of reasons, mainly our veterans. Thank you. And Stella would like to say a few words. My name is Stella Stevens, and I also object to um, SB 1139. Um, to go along with what Betty Robinson had said, um, the, the fact that it dovetails into another bill that gives licensure to people that are not U.S. citizens uh, opens up a huge Pandora's box um, for uh, medical um, alone. Um, this opens up when you go to a clinic or a hospital or anything, people from offshore will um, be able to be licensed. They will not undergo FBI checks and the other um, uh, checks that are necessary for regular U.S. citizens with Social Security numbers. The, the IT number um, 
is not subject to FBI background. So what you're going to effectively have is in, you're going to encourage, this bill will encourage more so for foreign people with malpractice to come in and get licensure here, also to get um, um, uh, scholarships that will be forgiven. So when you, I'm not sure if you have children now, but when you um, try to get into college, you have to fill out the forms and you have to have grades. But it, because of the bill, it will automatically dovetail the illegals into taking places of the U.S. citizens. So those citizens that do have loans, um, haven't helped them trying to get a job because the illegals will have all of their loans forgiven and because of the fact that they are illegal, there are other laws that are uh, passed in Washington, D.C. as well as in Sacramento that um, favor the tax situation for a business. Businesses are moving out and they're bringing in foreign people. Um, and um, I believe it is a tad less than $10,000 per person, per, uh, per employee, per company to hire somebody that is um, not a citizen because they don't have to pay Obamacare and so forth, but I'm getting off track. Uh, SB 1139 is not good for uh, the voting citizenship, okay? Anybody that has a child that has outstanding debt, which they've co-signed, and if you've got people that have, as um, Daryl has said, if they are um, veterans that have come in and trying to get into college, they're looking at a boatload of debt, and the illegals will have it all for free. They already get free benefits, they get everything, and this is literally disenfranchising voters. So I'm not sure um, it would be in the best interest of anybody to approve this or any bill like that, because what voter in the right mind is going to vote again for somebody who voted for this? Thank you. Anyway, that's Steve, it. Please. Sorry. <laughs> Steve would so like to say a few words. Yes. Uh, thank you, Lexi. I appreciate your uh, welcoming us on short, such short notice. Uh, I'd like to talk about this bill in the much broader context, and ask the Senator to consider it in the broader context. Um, I want to quote uh, President Coolidge, quote, free government has no greater menace than disrespect for authority and continual violation of the law. It is the duty of a citizen not only to observe the law, but to let it be known that he is opposed to its violation. We're performing our duty as citizens today to communicate to the Senator that there's a problem here in rewarding illegal aliens for breaking the law. Uh, I have a couple of quotes from Theodore Roosevelt. The greatest crimes that can be committed against our government are to put on the statute books or allow to remain their laws that are not meant to be enforced and to fail to enforce the laws that exist. And then the other one, if we fail to do all that is that in us lies to stamp out corruption, we cannot escape our share of responsibility for the guilt. The first requisite of successful self-government is unflinching enforcement of the law and the cutting out of corruption. Well, what Laura is doing with this bill is not just failing to support the enforcement of law, he's rewarding people who break the law. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, the government exactly. is a mm -hmm. teacher. The government, when it passes the law, is telling the people that this is good. They might not agree, but it does communicate that. And if the government keeps passing laws that say, law doesn't matter, that attitude grows and grows. We know there are a lot of causes of crime, and this is one important one, what the government teaches. And I want to finish with a quote here from Professor Lillian Devere. She says, what is dangerous, no, what is likely to be fatal is to embrace a conception of the common good whose achievement could be won only in disregard of the rule of law. We can find ways to help people in their lives, but we've always got to do it within the law. And we've always got to support the principle of the rule of law. Because, and I'll mention one, I, I said I was going to finish, but I, I there's one, <laughs> one more idea. Um, uh, 
a writer for Time Magazine, I can't recall his name right, he talks about the concept of illiberal democracy. And that's a democracy where they, ha they elect their leaders, but they don't have the rule of law and free speech and free press and all that goes along with a real democracy. And he was referring to the recent events in the last couple of years in Egypt, where they did elect their leader, but he didn't go by the rule of law, he didn't respect the Constitution, and now the military has taken over that country again. That's a democracy without a rule of law, and that doesn't work. And our founding fathers knew it didn't work. And if we're adopting policies, supporting policies that undermine the rule of law, we're undermining democracy, because true democracy depends on the rule of law. We're undermining our freedom, because true freedom depends on democracy. And we're undermining another founding principle, the, the sovereignty of God, because God created every person with inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And if we don't respect that, we're not America anymore. Thank you, Lexi. Thank you. I have one other thing. Mm -hmm. Dovetailing, um, if, I, if I may, um, everybody wants to be equal, but this puts the illegals more equal. Does that make sense? It makes them above, above being equal. It makes it on an uneven scale. So nobody is equal. Um, the citizens are disenfranchised, basically, of everything. And then, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Daryl. It seems like the Democrats in, in the, our Congress in California have totally ignored the oath that they swore in office. Mm -hmm. Every every item they they violate, it seems like, well, it doesn't matter. Law doesn't matter to, these, to some of these people. It seems like uh, they want to create another world here with another set of laws. So unfortunately, we have three sets of laws in the country. Those for a government in Washington, those for a people here, which we try to abide and, and follow it, and then we have another set of laws for illegal aliens. Mm -hmm. And they're bringing all those, even though we have laws against that, they want to make these things, what's wrong is now right. And I think that's the major problem. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank um, you for Vaughn um, just has a packet of information. Uh, we included the uh, letter that our organization has officially submitted. We're going to be um, in the record in opposition to this bill. And so the letter's in there and information about the bill as well as a copy of it. Okay. So um, we are just here to strongly urge Senator Nguyen to vote no and also um, assist us during the hearing with being on the panel. We have three expert witnesses. And that was the other letter. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. I just say one last thing. <laughs> what I want to say is this. Is she's a Republican. Mm -hmm. And I w what I want to see is I want to see our Republicans coalesce as a group and have an opposition, a hardcore opposition to the Democrat Party in Sacramento. That's it. And, uh, Lexi, mm -hmm. there's one thing I hope you could make uh, Senator Nguyen aware of if she's not already aware of, and that's an um, international study group called Transparency International. And you can just find it by Googling. Every year they do rankings of almost all the countries in the world according to corruption in the public sector as determined by 12 or 13 uh, studies of business organizations. And what you find there, uh, I probably haven't even seen this year's, if it's been out yet, but you find usually America is about 10% down on the corruption index. But that means it's less corrupt than about 90% of the countries in the world. And actually, there's numbers assigned. It's not really your ranking that's so important, because those top countries, and mostly the European and countries like um, New Zealand and Australia that are up at the top, but um, the actual uh, numbers uh, show that America is much less corrupt than most countries in the world. 
And as we bring in people without assimilating them, and mm -hmm. particularly from corrupt countries, and it happens that almost all the illegal immigrants are from the countries that are quite corrupt. Whether you're talking about Asia, whether you're talking about uh, Latin America. So uh, if we bring these people in and reward them for breaking the law, we're teaching them that the law is not important, don't worry about it, and um, we're doing reverse assimilation. We're becoming more like the corrupt countries than we're teaching people to um, obey the law. And uh, just to illustrate one point that I saw on television a few years ago, um, and this is when Arizona passed a law that, they passed a couple laws that have, have set illegal immigration, but I think uh, illegal immigrants, but the SB 10 was the most controversial. And on television they were interviewing an illegal alien with, I don't know, 10 children or a lot of children. She was going to move from Arizona because of this to Colorado. And uh, she said, I'm not a criminal. A criminal is somebody who murders somebody. Well, that's not the American theory. In America, anybody who breaks any of the criminal laws, murder or something lesser, is a criminal. So if, if that kind of philosophy is going to come in here and people feel obligated to uh, obey only the laws against murder or something like, you know, ser really serious like that, that's what we're going we're to we're be gone. We're not going to be the same country anymore. It's just automatic. The thing when they come to the country, they think they can vote without without any reason whatsoever. And I think this is what they've uh, they've tried it before. And now to come across the border, oh, I'm going to be a citizen and vote. Well, freedom is not free. I wish they would say that. Um, immigrant immigrants are legal immigrants pay a high, high price. A uh, long time getting here, and I'm sure you know about a lot of that. But we have a lot of friends and they're not here in the group, but they are immigrants from Cambodia and other places. They worked a long, hard time to get citizenship. They're very proud, and they're very patriotic, and they do not agree with the illegal uh, mm -hmm. at this point. Yeah. Sorry, we keep adding. <laughs> uh, I appreciate all your comments. So, um, I will let some there when there are comments in. Thank you. Do you have any, anything else that you would like to do? You, could we get a, your business oh. card? Um, I just started, so I don't have my business oh, card okay. just yet, but I'd be happy to give you our WHU staff. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Please. Give me one moment. Thank you. Mm -hmm.